So when you do all that work, right, and you land something like Mindhunter, and then it's a success, and then it goes away for whatever this reason is with scheduling and money and Netflix and Fincher and all that. I mean, that's got to suck, right? <laughs> that's mm-hmm. got to be a, like, like as an actor on it, you know, I don't know who makes that final call if it's Fincher or the network or whatever the, the problem is. That's just you got to roll with that punch or is that something you fight for or try to uh, convince people of otherwise or that's just the biz? You know uh, that it's up to David. You know, yeah. it's what David wants to do, and and um, and, and that's I think just that, something you got to respect his will. I'd be like, mm-hmm. no, come no, on, what no, do I got to no, tell him to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, and look, you know, call? what's the cost? What's the price? The, the, the um, it all depends on how you choose to look at these things. Mm-hmm. And um, would I have liked to have come back and played uh, uh, Bill Tench? Um, for a couple more seasons, sure. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, if I ever get that call, um, I'll say yes immediately. Okay, good. But, <laughs> good um, to know. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, I, uh, I've been in the business long enough um, to know how fortunate I was mm-hmm. to have had that opportunity in the first place. Right, right. And it had a transformational effect on my life and my career. Mm-hmm. I said earlier in this conversation, I don't audition anymore, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, there's a reason that Johnny Depp can live in, in Paris or Harrison Ford could live in Mexico, whatever they want to yeah, do. Yeah, right. It's because they don't have to make themselves available at Warner Brothers and Fox and Paramount. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, uh, right. you know, every week to go into rooms. You know what I mean? And read for directors sure. and casting directors and producers. And 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 there's. I'm not against that process. I think that you know you want to be a good actor, become sure. a good auditioner. Mm. Well. You know, yeah. um, you know, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> because it, right? that's what yeah. you're going to have to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, a, a casting director that I, I really admired, um, uh, early in my career, she said, the guys who get the parts are the guys who go to school on the material, mm-hmm. you know, you know, really Which know what you want to do when yeah. you walk in, uh, walk in that room. So, so, so yeah, I mean, Mindhunter changed my life. Huh? Um, and I have a lot of gratitude because of that, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't love to come back and do more. Yeah, <laughs> give me uh, give me a give me a percentage in your gut, percentage chance that Mindhunter comes back. Wow. Well, you know, it's so funny because um, I uh, I read a news report recently, uh, an entertainment journalist in in the UK, who said that he who reported that that discussions that had been going on mm-hmm. between David and Netflix about a potential third season. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually, I have the, I'm going to have the opportunity to see David, uh, you know, uh, in a couple of days. So you know, I'm sure the subject will come up, but um, I was on the phone with a great director named Carl Franklin mm-hmm. and uh, Carl Franklin directed uh, four episodes of Mindhunter in the second season and has directed so much film and television. A lot of people remember him from a great movie called One False Move, but he's directed everything. And uh, and he's a friend. And you know, and he said, you know, I I spoke to David about that. He, he didn't seem to think that there was that he you know that there was much to that. So I don't know I don't know what the I don't know what the answer is. Um, but look, you know, um, you know, life goes on. What happens? is you get to a certain stage where people know you well enough and you're well enough established that, you know, you don't have to audition anymore. Right. right? And as a consequence, that's, nice. that's, that's the big hurdle. And, yeah. you know, that was David got me over that. Yeah. You know, was it was Mindhunter, mm-hmm. you know, um, because, you know, you can be uh, the same actor doing the same job for many, many years, but you have to be in a show, you know, that's really critically acclaimed the mm-hmm. way Mindhunter was, you know, and, and, you know, in a commercial success, perhaps not a runaway hit like Stranger Things or something no, like that, but, but, yeah. but, 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 sure, a, but a, a film, a film that a, a television show that had an audience, yeah. a loyal audience, mm-hmm. people really love the show. And, um, I got enough attention, uh, because of that performance that now, you know, you know, now uh, they come to you a little bit. Now they I come was, to me. I was yeah. actually surprised you weren't nominated for an Emmy for season you two. I thought season two great to that. build well, tension. Thanks. I appreciate that. Incredible. Uh, look, you know, um, I felt as though uh, we could have gotten more recognition in multiple categories. Mm-hmm. You know, first of all, how about 
uh, for David Fincher as director, mm -hmm. or Eric Messerschmidt uh, for director of photography. Now, he did win an Oscar this year for Mank, which I was thrilled about because he's a wonderful guy and, it is, and a good friend, and it couldn't happen to a nicer person. But, you know, I thought of, we could have been nominated uh, in, medi in Medicare categories, mm -hmm. including production design. You know, it's a period piece. The attention to detail was was so impressive. Incredible. You know, really across the board. I mean, we did get, uh, so so uh, Cameron Britton, who mm -hmm. played Ed Kemper on the show, mm -hmm. um, was nominated uh, for, for season one. I thought a uh, very well-deserved nomination. That was when the, actually, when, so when we, sorry to interrupt you, but when we, when, when uh, quarantine first hit, like hardcore lockdown quarantine, and I went home and my parents were like, we think about getting into TV, which is such an insane <laughs> thing for people this, to this say. Television like, thing. We're going to try television. I was like, I got a show. So we put on Mindhunter season one and I watched it alone the first time I ever watched it. And watching that scene with your mother was not easy. something I really There's should have predicted was coming. But I was like, oh, I completely forgot this was going to happen. And. Oh, this is going to be awful. Yeah. And it was, you know, you talk about like watching sex scenes with your parents and things like that. You don't really talk about someone killing their mother and having sex with their head with your parents. <laughs> like that, one's that right. one doesn't just pop up in conversation. Yeah. No. no. That's a heavy fucking show, man. Is, is something Thanks. like that take its toll? We've talked to, uh, we talked to Brian Cranston recently about yep. some of the scenes in Breaking Bad where he, like, I think he said he like, cried tears in a certain scene and had to like right. leave it at the set. I mean, you were dealing with some stuff that was heavy material, or is that just, you know, that's Well, look, you. you know, I mean, you know, you spend a lot of time doing research about the serial killers and about the crimes that you they yourself do it as, as well you have to well yeah. you know you know you know sure because you know you you, you have to know what's going on right. you have to know the, the 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 personal histories of the of the of the criminals and, sure. and what makes them different and how they did what they did because so much of the show hinges upon that right. what are we I doing? mean it, it comes through it too we're doing a, a study yeah. you know what I mean of For incarcerated sure. serial killers For and sure. the psychological underpinnings of sexually motivated homicides so there's a there's and they're all different yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean yeah. <laughs> He's done his research. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but you, you have yeah. to do it. So, 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 what I came away more was uh, a real respect for the guys. For serial killers, huh? For serial killers, <laughs> yeah. Because it's a tough job, man. Yeah. You know, gotta be nasty. Yeah. First, you gotta stop. Then you gotta chop up the body. You gotta figure out a way to dispose of it. You know exactly. You gotta make sure that the uh, the pol you don't leave any. Uh, it's an underrated hard job. I feel like right. people don't name it atop the list. <laughs> um, no, look for that for, for for the guys in law enforcement who devote yeah, their course. lives. You know. Um, you know, uh, to to well, uh, to homicide detectives generally, but 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 definitely, you know, the guys who go after those, uh, the the you know the the the, the monsters. The, yeah, because the because they have to become obsessed with them and mm -hmm. their and the crimes that they committed, and they're always thinking about it, and they're always poring over crime scene photographs, and they're always you know you know talking to you know the families of victims and trying to uh, you know uh, imagine you know the the, the 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 what the killer was thinking at the time that he yeah, committed this crime. Yeah, you gotta become you, you gotta really yeah. immerse yourself in that stuff all the time, mm -hmm. and you take it home with you, and you pay a price for that. I think you know with your in your family life and yeah. you know and emotionally and 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 and, yeah, and when, even when, physically sometimes these guys have nervous breakdowns or they oh, you know what i mean they when, become when you have the the daily things. combo with your wife of like how was work honey and it's like well let me yeah. tell you, you <laughs> right know, well, i think what they do the... is they they don't talk about it yeah yeah, yeah you know what i mean right because right. you know that has its pitfalls as well which has its pitfalls it as yeah. well exactly so then but, so but then, you, then it's become such a thing now like i have that daily combo with my girlfriend i'm like how was work today She's like, I listen to these podcasts. And then yeah. she just tells me about true crime podcasts. And I'm oh, like, man, that, like, that, that obsession, <laughs> that obsession, true crime. And this is different because it's it's true, but it's still like a scripted show. So it's kind of a little right. hybrid of the two. But, yeah, people can't get enough of that sometimes. And it, and usually uh, it skews kind of female. And But the, when when you see people get obsessed with it, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you, why do you want to listen to this so much? Yeah, right? yeah but it is, it's an infatuation. And I think Mindhunter did it. You know, better than anybody. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I speak for every single fan when we want more Mindhunter. So, <laughs> God willing, whatever, you know, holds that up, gets out of the way. 96% of you motherfuckers watch these videos 
and aren't subscribed. Shout out to the four percent. You are good people. Four percent of people are watching. I our think clips. that's about about what the I, I would guess the breakdown of good people versus bad people in the world. Yeah. Good people versus bad people. Probably about ninety six percent to four. That's but fair. Be a good person. But it's not even. I'm not even asking you to be a good person. I'm asking you to push a button. Yeah, but, but, I'm asking but, you to click a button. Yeah, you, yeah, you can be a bad person still, but just click. You the can button. be a piece of shit. Just click subscribe. Ninety six percent of you watch these clips, and they're like, "Oh my god, that was a funny clip from this podcast. I liked it." And I'm just not gonna help them out. The people who work to make it, the people who work to produce it, to post it, to upload it, and there's nothing from you. You're a bad person if you don't subscribe. Be a good one.